when you start to answer questions in interviews, you, you get this like really quiet tone and be like, Oh, do that. <laughs> you know, I used to never listen to myself, and then I record myself talking to my friend, and I realize I'm super loud, super cut everybody off, asshole, and so I'm trying to not be that. Maybe that's why I do it. You're just so gentle. Like, I before, try to be. Before the camera turns on, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's probably why. Man. Question, it's like, well, we're just, you know, being shown the inside. <laughs> That, I've never noticed that, but That's I bet awesome. you it's because I watched that, or I listened to that thing, and I was like, I'm disgusted with myself. Now you're talking normal. Okay, I'll try to stay at a normal... No, no, I, I respect both. I've been scenes. doing this for two years, and he just told me. <laughs> yeah, I think it's funny every time. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying not to be loud. So we were trying to figure out someone that we thought might be able to, to fit, and we both are really big fans of, of John's, so it just kind of seemed like it was worth a shot. We kind of felt like it was a long shot, and um, so we just called him out of the blue, kind of. Yeah, we, he was our number one pick. Number one pick. In the draft. But draft. we were excited that he was, we didn't know he was going to be so into the idea. And also so good, I mean, yeah, I mean he's yeah. kind of exceeded our expectations of, um, I think it's making us all better. Yeah. It sort of, I don't know, it sort of came in, to the you know the picture right at the right time for me too like it was a uh, it was something I, I had obviously thought about it you know I I'd always you know, sort of followed the band and was a fan I was a fan of their bands before and we played a lot of shows together and everything before um but other than just like sort of like watching them go you know do their thing and make you know sort of make me proud a little bit like that was about <laughs> it but then uh, as soon as like the idea of actually like joining up with I always the big thing is I always envied their collaboration because I knew both of them when they were in their separate bands which were both great and just you know and to have to see like two guys like that come together um, and do Dylan Jr. Junior Junior that was kind of amazing to me because I know the the ego struggle that it takes to kind of it, that's a unique thing to have you know usually there's that central person that is like the egocentric middle to the band somewhere in there yeah. mm -hmm. and I knew that this band couldn't be like that because they both just knowing mm -hmm. both their histories and so I always really envied that I thought that was really cool and, and actually, I actually really wondered about how that worked too and so even just getting the opportunity to see how it did work you know like let alone be a part of it and play these great songs and everything um, it's one of those things that you just can't pass up was it a surprise when they approached you? Oh, or it was a huge surprise. Serious? I hadn't <laughs> talked to either of them in a long time. Like, yeah. not since we, probably the last time was when, it was, I mean, it was probably our bands playing together. Yeah. Last time we, I mean, I think like, we maybe emailed a couple times and just yeah. said like, good job on your new thing, you know, <laughs> like back and forth a couple times, but. I think I saw you before the Jeep show. Oh yeah, yeah. That was the last time I That's seen right, you. yeah. Um, and I, you know, uh, this uh, artist I work with for my episode back stuff, Chris Everhart, He's, um, you know, good friends with these guys, and so the uh, I'd always get sort of like the inside track and on what was going on and everything. So I was like, I was really following it closely, you know, kind of from the inside a little more. Um, and uh, yeah, and just Josh just called, kind of called me out of the blue one day and asked if I'd be interested in meeting up and talking about it. And I, I think that's pretty true. I, I, yeah. I think we're moving in a, a little bit more of like, I think the, the next record is, is a little bit more like mature. It just sounds, it sounds better. It, um, it sounds a little bit more grown up, you know, um, without using the worst like, adult contemporary. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound adult contemporary. No, it doesn't. No, but it's like, it's, it's just it's more realized. It's more developed. Yeah. It's more confident, which what you said earlier today. Like I think that's a good way to put it. The, the music is, is just, it's it's not ashamed at all, and it's very bold. Uh, it's strong, you know. And I think that's a good step for us from coming from something that's, you know, a little goofy, a little, you know. We still have that. We're still ridiculous, but um, it's just a little. Yeah, it's still part of us. I think. I think. I, 
I believe that too many people like paint themselves into a corner by being like this serious artist. You know, like I feel like you know if you if you're like if you're like Radiohead and you want it and you want to like be goofy for a minute and put out like you know like a, an album where you're like putting hip hop beats out like you almost they've almost like painted themselves into the corner where they have to be the coolest band in the world like they have they just have to be and I think that like there's some kind of freedom that comes from being able to make serious work but at the same time enjoy yourself when you're playing it and when you're traveling and stuff because like it'd be so hard to make this like serious heart wrenching work and then have to like live that all the time I, I just don't think I could do it I, it would be too it would be too heavy you know yeah I think, I think that with our image I think we're able to do that but also do other things you know like we're not confined to anything and that's that's been a great thing about this band it's like literally this out this new album could sound like anything and I don't think it would be weird with the name Dale Earnhardt Jr. Jr. and our look and anything like that you know yeah and we could put we could put out a hip hop album with like with rappers next and it'd be yeah, I think that would make sense. sense. Right in, and I think we yeah. might. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I finally got a title for this story. The only part Junior Junior goes adult contemporary. Yes. Like that. <laughs> Thanks, Daniel. That's okay. awesome. That's perfect. Why don't we go down the line? This this place we're in right now. Yeah. That's for me. Yeah. I'm not gonna pretend to have a great answer for that because I've never lived in Detroit really. So I'm still when someone says Detroit, like what first things pop in your head? I don't know. I'm just gonna say something stupid. <laughs> Motown, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Motown. Seriously though, yeah. I think for both of us, it's just a huge. That's what I grew up wanting to say. You know, Stevie Wonder. I'd rather be that type, of, you know, singer songwriter than really anything. And that's a. I can't leave it. It's like so melodic. Mm -hmm. That whole background um, so I think that's the biggest thing for me I think if you were just like name like <clears throat> what what do you closely associate with Detroit and we're like go and I didn't think about it I'd probably say Kid Rock and then I'd slap myself <laughs> that's, that's what I should say I was like I'm not going to say that that's all awesome. <laughs> just like made himself so you know, it's, so it's like god damn it that <laughs> I think when I think Detroit sports if you were like gun to my head, I just I would think Kid Rock, because every time I'm in a game, he's on the jumbotron <laughs> wearing like a cowboy hat. And looks he's at the really Pistons drunk. He's there all the time. Do you remember when he interviewed your George Blaha interviewed him? Yes, and he was drunk and he just started. He just wouldn't stop going. Blah. I love it. <laughs> Blah. Blaha's the best. <laughs> Blaha was like, okay. You know what? That's the thing I think of actually. Billy Johnson. Blaha. Man. Blaha. Blaha is Detroit. He's awesome. Blah is like the, um, oh God, what's that guy's name? Uh, the news guy, Larry King. Larry <laughs> <from Detroit. laughs> uh, sorry, I'm biting my nails like the brown here. But I apologize this question. I think that our, we just got a, a first draft of our new website, and they were like filling in the shows section with like what it might look like, and it said, Five sold out dates at uh, United Airlines Arena in Miami. <laughs> that looked good, so hopefully, yeah, maybe that's like yeah. five days in a row. United Airlines Arena, <laughs> Miami. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, no, but seriously, doing arenas, I think, is where we're headed or where we want to head. We want to be huge. <laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> it's not actually that's a, it's not that weird of a question. No. I mean, we want to. We want as many people as possible to hear our music, mm -hmm. you know, because we we believe in it and we love it and we we feel that it has value and that other people should hear it. And uh, uh, so that's always the goal is to just get as many people as possible to hear it, um, and then to also get better. And that's why we brought John on board. That's why we have Mike. You know, like we're just trying to really uh, work hard at being good. Because this is our life, you know, this is our job. We want to, we want to do well at it. So. Yeah, I like. I think that it would be, it'd be great if um, we were able to like execute all of our stupid ideas all the time. Yeah. Um, I'd like to like achieve a level of um, like notoriety that would allow us to just more easily 
accomplish some of the things that we really want to do, like collaborations with people that would be random and fun. Yeah, if we had like Nickelback money, the things that we would do with that. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean, it's like yeah, we would probably everyone that shows up gets like. I mean, we'd come up with the most fun stuff. Yeah, it'd be great. I was thinking if we had Nickelback money, I would want to record like a, like a metal. It sounds album. like an actual form of like <laughs> notes, you know? I have a Nickelback. I'd want to record like a, a metal album or like even I don't know. It could be cooler to do like a smooth jazz album, but <laughs> but then. <laughs> but then to have, but then to have like a panther that that you get from the zoo be the singer, and you just like tune in, you know, and you'd call the band Pantro. Wow. Just stuff like that. I think it'd be a lot easier to like just fully you know, do. You'd have your sold out shows pretty quickly, I would think. Yeah. Yeah. Panther. I don't know that a panther would be able to go into a venue. It's, it's gotta be more thing. colorful. Panthers yeah. are. Yeah. You know. Plus the rider would be weird. It'd be like. Love Seventeen it. pounds of ox meat. Yeah, <laughs> that would be weird. This wouldn't even make sense. Yeah. We need one dead antelope, or it'd have to be living because they only eat things that they can kill. And they'd have to have a big enough space in the green room to chase it. Yeah, living antelope. <laughs> hundred yeah, yards. Hundred yards of space. <laughs> Some grass. <laughs> Some grass. <laughs> uh, all right. Anyway. Yep. Is, Frank, is Frank Sinatra still alive? I'd love to write a I don't even know. It's really bad. Does anyone know? I don't know if he's still alive. No, no, no. 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 that's not. How about Tony Bennett? Is Tony Bennett? Tony. Tony Bennett? <laughs> Poor man's friend. Yeah, he just, didn't, he just, yeah. didn't he just do something yeah, with uh, that, that Lady Gaga? That sounds good. No, that's horrible. I'd love to do a record with Poor Man's Frank Sinatra. Old. He does old not green want to eyes. do that. Old green eyes. <laughs> oh, man. We've got some on our, on our uh, to do list. Yeah, we do. But they're secrets. I don't want people to steal them. Yeah, that's true. If we tell you who we really want to work with, then, like, you know, Kid Rock's going to just take our idea. <laughs> Kid Rock's is Yeah, he's going to read the song. He want to cover the song about Detroit, you know, and then he comes out with this jam yeah. talking about Marvin Gaye and Rosa we Parks. Got, we also, we honestly did try and make this album in the Motown studio. We were, like, going to bring gear in. And I talked to like a bunch of the volunteers there, and they were all really cool about it. And then we talked to the president of Motown Museum, and he, he called me and he's like, "Yeah, well, you know, um, fortunately, Kid Rock did some recording in here, and he kind of set the precedent. He paid ten thousand dollars a day." And I was like, "Boo! What? Ten thousand dollars a day? Like for vibe? Like you're not you're not even you don't even have you have to bring your own console. Like, yeah. like ten thousand dollars a day to to like yeah. sit in that space, mm -hmm. all because Kid Rock paid." Well, you know, ruined it forever. Ruined it forever. So maybe it's not Nickelback money. We just need Kid Rock and Rock money. Yeah, he's got more, way more than Nickelback. Maybe, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Really? No. He's got like a beer. He owns like Jimmy and Red's <laughs> Yeah, so, I don't think so. Have you seen that commercial where the deer is running and it turns into honey and then cherries? <laughs> what? Yeah. It's like a stag and it's running through a city. You know what I'm talking about. Nickelback, though, they make so much money and they don't spend any of it on production. <laughs> so I think they're, they're probably banking more. Um, I don't know. I think that they're pretty great at coming up with the same song over and over again. Um, like, honestly, I think that's a skill. I couldn't do it. Yeah. Well, that's a weird way to end this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, that was...